Hi everyone, David Bailey here, and today we're going to do something really cool. We're going to take Apple data and we're going to forecast it for the rest of 2020. So that's going to give the next 65 days from now to the end of the year. We're also going to look at a little bit more than that, but uh, I'm going to end up in the end with a graph I'm going to give you like this. It's going to show you where it goes and why. Okay, and we'll see the prediction on it or forecast on it. So let's go over here and we're going to go through this really quick. I'm not going to go in depth in the code like I sometimes do, but this is to give you a data science perspective on Apple's stock price going for the rest of the year. I'm going to show you why. So this is an R and R Studio, which is what I'm in right now, and we're loading in these libraries right here. So these are the libraries right here we're going to use, QuantMod, T-Series, Time Series, Forecast, and XTS. Next, what I do is I take the data. So this is not just one year's data. We're using all the way back from 2005. So we're basically using 15 years and four months added to that. So we got from 2006-1, which is June 1st of 2005, to current, which is 1027 of 2020. I get the symbols for it from Yahoo Finance with the get symbols function. I look at the class of it. It's XTS or Zoo. If I hit that, gives me it right there. Um, what we need to do is we need to get part four. So if I do this, Apple with this, so it's the stock ticker symbols AAPL. I need the fourth piece, which is the fourth column, which is the closing price because it doesn't matter what it opened at. It doesn't matter what the high or the low was that day. What really matters to me is the closing price. Now I could go and say, okay, we could use the high for each day and predict off of that. You could do that, but it's best to use the close. So we're going to do that. I'm going to stick it in this uh, container or data frame, you could call it, that's going to be called Apple Close Prices. Okay, and then what we're going to do is going to plot that. We're going to plot it, and we use the parameter MF row C1 comma one to give it just one graph. I could use that two comma two to you get four graphs and so on. You can quickly figure how it is. So if I hit that and Control Enter, it gives me this. This is our entire thing without the forecast. Okay, of where we are now in. Uh, you know, October 27th, 2020, and all the way from the beginning of 2005. Obviously, it would have been a great thing to buy Apple back in 2005, or even to buy it in 2019 or so when it hit this, or even to buy it here. Look what happened. Apple's just done tremendously over this quarantine, especially. Look at that. That's just amazing because everybody's at home, and they're buying electronic, you know, digital products like Apple's uh, earbuds, um, iPods, iPads, you name it, um, iPhone, all that stuff. So anyway, so we've got this graph, right? So let's go back here. And once we've got that graph, right, we've plotted the data, we put it, we've taken the close price, that's the close price. Now what I want to do is I want to look at the ACF and PACF. I'm not going to go into that. You can watch my other videos if you want to see that. Basically, we're looking for lags. So if I do this, I end up with this. What that does, it tells me I have a lag at about one right here on the parcel ACF, and I have a continuing lag here. So what we want to do is we want to look at this, and next what I want to do is get the auto arima. So let's do that. And our p-value and all that stuff will come from this. So right here it's telling me I need a 520. See that? So if we print this first. Actually, it might have just printed that right above here. The p-value here is 0 0.99. I don't know why I wrote it as 0.87, but it's 99. And um, our auto REMA is 520. Okay, so we know that. So now our fit A is going to be the auto REMA. This needs to be a 5. And what we do is we run this. That is the uh, auto REMA model. I'm not going to run the next two, and the reason being is they're too long. I've already run them. They're in the data already. You can run them yourself. It's just fit B and fit C, which are at the one difference of 238. See it right there? And the next one is a difference of one. So when I look at two different differences, the auto REMA already told us we need to have, most likely have a difference of two. Um, we have the difference of two here. We have a difference of one here, so we can see the difference between those two in fit B and fit C. Then fit D, what I like to do is I always like to look at the generic, you know, like if you buy expensive or cheap 
uh, business intelligence tool that gives you an automated auto arima, they generally tend to default to 111 auto reams. They're not the most accurate, but they're better than nothing. So what I want to do is I want to compare all four of these together, the auto arima, the default arima, and the two custom arima models, one with a difference of two, one with a difference of one. So we run all those. Then next, what we do is we plot those models, right? So I want to see them all. So remember before I did a one comma one, now I'm doing a parameter of two comma two. Give me four graphs on this screen. So let's do that and look at those four for a period of 65 days. That's what that term is. So if we do that, I've got this, right? And that tells me I've got fit A, fit B, fit C, and fit D based off of that data. Some are down, some are saying some variance and going, you know, flat and then that one's up but let's go a little further than that okay so next what we want to do is we want to look oh well, if i wanted to look at any of those individually i can do that with the one comma one but let's look at the accuracy of them. let's determine which one's the most accurate i know which one's going to be the most accurate already is fit two but let's just run it so you can see it anyway this is where let me pull this out a little bit so you can see it better let's run it again this is where you get the mape okay which is the uh, mean absolute percentage error and is one of the leading indicators of accuracy that you can determine here. You take the flip side of it. So if my MAPE is 1.52, in this case it's the lowest MAPE that I have, then I'd flip that over and that becomes the, uh, the new uh, or the 98% accuracy in this case, 98.47. So next, what I want to do is I want to plot these for 65 days, right? So if I do that, I end up with this, and it's plotted the forecast for 65 days. Now look at that. As I told you before, some go down, some go up a little bit. Now let's go here. I can plot it also if I want for 120 days. I wanted to look at, you know, going into 2021. Gives me a little bit longer, but it's still the same looking thing. Okay. So I can do that. I can plot it for 240 days if I wanted to. This would be less accurate. Um, I can also hit this, which is forecast of, and you pick which one was the most accurate. In this case, it's fit B. So what I do is for H is the term which would be 65 days, which I told you we were looking for the rest of the year. And if I do that, it gives me all of the forecasted uh, values for that. So what happens is we start with a value of around 114 set right here. And now obviously this is not days that you would recognize as the next day, but that would be the October 28th, you know, and so on and so forth for the rest of the year. And uh, it gives me the value. So it goes for a while. If you look here, 114, it goes down to 113, back to, you know, 112, uh, then up, then down, then up, then down. But then it starts to build. It goes 116. So it got a little variance of, you know, going down a little bit at the beginning. Um, but then it comes back up and ends up at 119 at the end of the year. Actually, almost 120. You see it right here. And then you've got, you know, the high, low, 80, 95 percentile range. But that's your actual forecasted values, 119. So you look at my little write up blurb over here. Let's do this. And let's move this down so you can get an actual idea of where it should go. So based on that, Remember I showed you the 114, you know it's going to be around $114 right, you know, right now at the start of the forecast. So a 65 day target is looking at about 120 uh, and we use four different ARIMA models, okay, over 15 years of data going back to 2005. So it's pretty, it's going to be fairly accurate. A, uh, so the target, what we're looking at is, think about it, from 114 to 120, that's about six bucks there, right? So it ends up being about you know, based on a 120, 114, about almost 5% is what they're saying is what will go up over the next 65 days. So by Christmas time, you'll be looking at, you know, $120 if you put 114 into uh, Apple stock now. Fairly, fairly good return, so it's a good buy at those prices. Now, keep in mind, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. I'm just showing you how to look at this from a data science perspective using forecasting models, measuring accuracy, and doing numerous tests along the way so you're pretty, pretty accurate in your uh, estimate. 
or uh, guesstimate, you might say, uh, on your forecast with Apple stock for the rest of 2020. Hope you found this interesting and informational. If you like this, you want to delve more into the code behind it, I have other similar uh, forecasts on this channel that will walk you through the code a little bit slower, go through each piece and explain things a little bit better as to how the code works if you want to do it yourself. But in any case, it shows you what it does for the rest of the year, and it's pretty interesting stuff. So please take a moment, uh, subscribe, like, and share, and I hope you have a great day and found this really interesting. Thanks.